Fancy. Okay. What is that? I don't know. We're just going to have to deal with it. So, before the break, we talked about fractions. We, we added to subtracted fractions. We multiplied. We divided fractions. We talked about improper fractions. We talked about proper fractions. Um, our trick, if you don't remember it, when we had fractions was if we wanted to add and subtract them, we wanted to make them into one fraction, like an entire fraction. It might not be the most convenient way to do things, but it's how you're going to do things all through math after this year. So for a question like this, this would be 3 and 1 half plus 1 and 2 thirds. Like that's what that would mean. But to add that is very difficult in the current written form. So instead of having it as a mixed fraction, where you have a number and then a fraction, we turn it into improper fractions, where it's just a number, a numerator, denominator. We basically take this big number out front, and we get rid of it. We turn it into the fraction. We had different strategies for that. So you guys had strategies from Fox Run that some of you really liked and were good at. That's cool. Use that if you want to use it. The way that I like to do this is instead of imagining this as 3, I would multiply it by whatever the denominator is. So I would do 3 times 2. And I'd figure out that equals 6. I could then add that 6 to that 1. So that this number would become 7 over 2. You took a mixed fraction, the big number in front, and you turn it into an improper fraction by adding that number to the top. But you have to multiply it by the denominator first. I'm going to do the same thing for the next one. <coughs> So I'm going to take this 1, I'm going to multiply it by 3 to get 3. And then I'm going to add that number to the numerator so that I now have 5 on top, 3 on the bottom. Once you get it to that point, you just have fraction plus a fraction, which we did a lot of these questions. The trick to adding fractions was to get something called a common denominator. A common denominator means same number on the bottom. Right? So if we look at this, the denominator is currently 2 and 3. We want a common denominator, same number on the bottom. We do that through multiplication. So you try to find the smallest number that 2 could multiply to become and 3 could multiply to become. So for instance, like 2... If we skip count by twos, there's two, four, six, eight, ten, and blah, blah, blah. If you skip count by the other denominator, which is three, you get three, six, nine, twelve, blah, blah, blah. Your goal was to find the smallest number that they both could become. That's called your lowest common denominator, your smallest number that they could both become. In this case, it's six. Right? I could turn 2 into 6 by multiplying by 3, and I can make 3 into 6 by multiplying by 2. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to look at these fractions, and we're going to multiply them, in this case, 3 to the first one and 2 to the second one. The phrase that we use was what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Right. So if I need to make this denominator into 6, I multiply by 3, then I also multiply the top by 3. And math is kind of like a balancing act. Anytime you're doing something, there has to be a balance to it. So when I'm changing the bottom number, I need to balance out the top number somehow. We do that by doing the same thing to it. This would change my numbers to now be 7 times 3 is 21. 2 times 3 is 6. My second one would be 5 times 2 is 10. Divided by 3 times 2, which is 6. Yeah. If the denominators are the same, can't you just multiply them together? Yep. So, like, and that's a trick that would work every time. I prefer to do the lowest common denominator because it keeps my numbers smaller. Um, and then I don't have to reduce my fraction, which is something else we practice. But if you're okay with reducing, that works every time. 
The good part about having a common denominator is now adding is easy. Remember we talked about like slices of pizza? So if you had one fourth of a pizza plus five fourths of a pizza, you have six fourths of a pizza. You just add the top numbers and the bottom stays the same. So 21 sixths plus 10 sixths would be 31 sixths or 31 divided by six. And that would be your final answer. So we turn mixed fractions into improper fractions. We get a common denominator and then we add the tops. That's like a review of basically everything we've done in this unit. Uh, the only thing we're missing is multiplying and dividing, which we will do. But that covered a lot. Yes, sir. As we have to do, uh, is it a sleepless form? Yep. Um, wouldn't it be five and one over six? Um, so that's if we were making it into mixed form, and it would be five and one over six. However, we will answer things in improper form now, like oh. that. So we leave it as 31 over 6. If it told you to write it in another form, then you do what you said. Okay. We'll do... You're good. It's just pencil. We'll do another one. So if you look at B, we want to add those fractions together. If we're just reading it out loud, just for the record, that would be 1 and 3 fourths plus 2 and 5 sixths. That's what that means. To be able to add them, though, you have to create improper fractions. We do that by taking the number in front. Actually, I think we did it like this last time. Take the number in front, 1, times it by the denominator, which is 4. And that gives you a number. You then add that number to the numerator. This becomes 7 over 4. We're then going to convert the second one. So if we go to convert the second one, we take the number in front, which is 2. We multiply it by the denominator, which is 6. And that equals 12. You take that number, you add it to the numerator to give you 17 over 6. That's converting into an improper fraction. At that point, you can add these things by getting a common denominator. Common means same, denominator means number on the bottom. So same number on the bottom. You do that by multiplying. Four and six could both multiply to become 12, right? Six becomes 12 by multiplying by two. Four becomes 12 by multiplying by three. You're going to do that to those fractions. So the first one I multiply by 3. I, what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. The second fraction to get to 12, I have to multiply by 2. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. This now gives me 21 over 12 plus 34 over 12. You now have improper fractions with a common denominator. You can just add the tops. So 21 twelfths plus 34 twelfths equals 55 twelfths. And that's a pretty good answer. We're going to talk about that answer for a second to see if we could make it a better answer. The way we make something a better answer is by doing something called reducing fractions. Okay, reducing a fraction means finding a number that could divide into both the numerator and the denominator. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. Right? If you look at this one, 55, yep, 55 and 12 do not have anything that they can both divide by. 55 can only divide by 5 and 11. 12 can divide by 2, 3, 4, and 6. Because they don't share anything they both can divide by, that is our proper answer. But remember to check that. Okay, We didn't talk about that in the last question, but we should have.
for question C, I want you to try to change both of those into improper fractions. So I'm going to give you a minute. Don't need to add or subtract them. Don't need a common denominator. Just convert them into improper fractions so that the big number is gone. So I want you to just to do is change the big number to a small number. I take the big number, multiply it by the denominator, and that tells me I have 15 that I need to add to the numerator. 15 plus 2 is 17, and divided by 5. The other one, take the number in front, 2, multiply it by 10, and that tells me that I have 20 things that I need to add to the top to give me 23 over 10. That would be the converting stage. I'm going to give you a minute now to try to get a common denominator. You don't need to try to add them or anything like that. You just want to try to get the numbers on the bottom to be the same. Remember, you do that by multiplying. So I'll give you a second to try it. Just try your best. I'm going to do this question two ways. Um, I'm going to do it using a lowest common denominator, which is 10. And then I'm going to do it using a trick that a lot of you are using. Like as I'm walking around, I'm seeing what you guys are doing. And you're getting a right answer, but not quite... Um, you're getting an equivalent fraction, but not the fraction that we'd be looking for. So the way that I would do this is try to find a common denominator and try to find the lowest common denominator. In this case, the lowest number they become is 10. So I would want to multiply this guy by 2, top and bottom. And the second fraction already has a common denominator of 10. So I don't need to do anything to it. This would give me answers of 34 over 10 plus... 23 over 10. If I put that together, add the tops, that will become 57 over 10. And that is a good answer. The other way that people were doing it and watching you guys around the room, there's a lot of us who are doing it. And it's probably just a trick you picked up at some point when you're doing fractions in Fox Run. And it does work. So what people are doing is instead of multiplying by 2, you're at this point. You have 17 over 5 plus 23 over 10. And you're just multiplying the denominators, which is what like Brax had alluded to earlier when he asked this question. So people are doing this. They're saying multiply this one by 10. Multiply this one by 5. This will work. Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to have 170 divided by 50 plus um, 115 divided by 50. 230, Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. If you add those together, you end up getting 285 divided by 50, which isn't the same fraction that I got, but they are equivalent. Equivalent means that if you were to put them in your calculator, they get the same decimal value, right? They're both going to be 5.7, put them in your calculator. So if you are using that strategy, that's fine, but you need to get good at reducing fractions. To reduce a fraction means to look at the top and the bottom and figure out what's a number they both could divide by. And you need to do it until you can't do it anymore. So these numbers both divide by 5. If you divide both by 5, you get 57 over 10, which is then your simplest form answer. And it is the same thing. Would you be able to break it down into fives? Yeah, well, we would leave it like that. So when we're when we're answering in reduced form or simplest form, we want to leave it as an improper fraction. So I want to leave it like that, 57 over 10. Don't break it up into pieces. That is simplest form. Simplest form is um, improper fraction where they can't divide any further, where they can't reduce. My suggestion because I know like where you're headed in math 
is to try to get good at the lowest common denominator. Doing this method is awesome because you understand the denominator part, the common denominator part. Try to work on figuring out the lowest common denominator. And if you can't do that, then do this as a backup plan. But you will have to eventually get good at this part. Maybe not this year, per se. You can get away with it. But in grade 10 and 11 and 12, being able to get the lowest common denominator is going to be important. Awesome. Subtraction. Subtraction works the same way. So when you have these numbers, you don't want the big number in front. So you're going to convert it into a fraction. You're going to take that number, multiply it by the bottom number. So 2 times 6 is 12. You're going to take 12, and you're going to add it to 5 to give me 17 over 6. You're going to do the exact same thing with the other one. So you take the number in front, times it by 9, equals 9. Take that. Add it to the top to give yourself 11. So I now have 17 over 6 minus 11 over 9. Subtracting fraction follows the same rules as adding fractions. You cannot subtract these fractions unless they have a common denominator. Again, I would suggest you focus on the lowest common denominator. So yes, I could multiply this one by 6 and this one by 9, but then you have 54 as your denominator. That's a pretty large number. Instead, if you think about the numbers that they multiply to become, skip count, 6, 12, 18, 9, 18, they both can become 18 by multiplication. The lowest common denominator will help you. It will make your life easier. So I'm going to multiply this one by 2. 3, multiply this one by 2. That gives me, on the top, 54. He says with zero confidence, that's not right. 51. Yeah, 51 is correct. Over 18, minus 22, over 18. The only difference between adding and subtracting fractions is the last step. So when we used to do 34 tenths plus 23 tenths and we'd add the tops, now we're gonna do subtraction, so it's 21 eighteenths minus, sorry, 51 eighteenths minus 22 eighteenths, we're gonna do subtraction across the top. My final answer would be 29 eighteenths, 29 over 18. The steps were all the same. Turn the big number into part of the fraction, common denominator, subtract the tops now instead of add the tops. Okay, up here. <laughs> I want you to try E on your own. We'll break this one into chunks again. So try to convert the big number into an improper fraction. So I'll give you a minute or two to do that. Board, I've shown you how to turn those into mixed, sorry, improper fractions, where there's no longer a number in front. I multiplied the two, the big number, by the little number on the bottom. Two by five is 10. And then I add that result to the numerator on the top. That gave me 11 over five. For the red one, I did one times eight to give me eight, and I added eight to the top to become 15 over eight as my fraction. At that point, I need to get a lowest common denominator. I want you to try that on your own. The lowest common denominator is 40. So you're trying to find a way to make both those numbers 40. So go ahead on your own. Try to figure out how to make them into 40. Okay, the common denominator is 40. Um, the way you got to 40 was you had to multiply the first one by 8, the second one by 5, which actually is the same trick that we were talking about earlier. So sometimes the trick will work out perfectly. You should have ended up with 88 over 40 minus 75 over 40. When you subtract the tops, 88 minus 75, you get 13 out of 40. Fantastic. I'm going to go through this one kind of quick. Um, to add them, I need to be able to make them a single fraction. So I do 4 times 9. 4 times 9 is 36. 36 plus 5 is 41. 
So I have 41 out of 9. Minus the other one would be 2 times 3, big number times the bottom, which is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7 out of 3. The only way I can add and subtract, in this case subtract, is if I have a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply the second fraction by 3 because that will make it 9 on the bottom, which is the same thing I already have. 41, 9 minus 21 over 9. My final answer would be 20 out of 9. I know I went a little fast on that one, but I think you were... We could use our time more wisely sometimes. <coughs> okay. G. G is a little more intimidating because there's three mixed fractions that you're trying to combine. However, the steps do not change. So to be able to add and subtract fractions, you must have... I keep saying mixed fractions. You have to have improper fractions with common denominators. To get an improper fraction, you need to multiply those big numbers in. Yeah. Would you use bed mass in these equations? Um, as it goes on, yes. Like if you had to do multiplication first, like say it was a fraction multiplied by a fraction minus a fraction, you do the multiplication first. Yeah. So looking at this one, I need to convert them all first. I'll do 5 times 6 to get 30. And then I add 30 to 1 to become 31 over 6. I then do the same thing for the middle fraction. So I have plus. The middle fraction is going to be 2 times 3, which equals 6. And I need to add that number to 2 to become 8 over 3. Then I'm going to subtract. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7 out of 2. So it's the same step. It's just more of it. All right? I converted all of those mixed fractions into improper fractions. It just took a little longer because there's three of them to convert. Now, to add and subtract these fractions, I need to get a common denominator. <coughs> To get a common denominator, I now need to get a common denominator for all three things. That could be a little trickier. If you want, you could just do the first two fractions and then try to do the next one to that number as well. Um, I prefer to just look at it and be like, hey, I need to get all three of these to become the same number. I wrote the denominators are. What could it be? Six. Yeah. Six, six, six. So they could all become six. Right? And if you're not sure how to do a common denominator, skip count. Okay, So for instance, 6, if I'm skip counting by 6s, goes 6, 12, 18, blah, blah, blah. The next one, if I'm skip counting by 3s, goes 3, 6, 9, blah, blah, blah. The last one is 2, 4, 6, 8, blah, blah, blah. And you'll notice a number that they all reach. In this case, it's six. And that'll tell you what your lowest common denominator is. That's a legitimate strategy to figure out lowest common denominators. Especially when questions get large, right? The more fractions, the harder it is. So write it out until you find a number they all share. I know you all can skip count, right? So just do it. Because they're all becoming six, the first one doesn't need to be multiplied by anything because it's already 6. The middle one needs to be multiplied by 2 to become 6. And the third one needs to be multiplied by 3 to become 6. This gives me 31 over 6 plus 16 over 6 minus 21 over 6. With addition and subtraction, we learned last unit, bed mass, addition, addition and subtraction can be done in any order. So you just do it left to right. You're going to go 31 plus 16 minus 21. And you should end up with, whoa, I already have an equal sign, so I don't need to do that. 
Um, you should end up with 26 out of 6. Yes, sir. I just thought I added the first two together and then I minus the result of that. That's perfect. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's the perfect way to do it. If you do it all in one, that's good. If you do it in two parts, that's good. It doesn't matter. I do it actually completely different. So like if I do that in my head, I do 31 minus 21 because that's those are your easy numbers. That gives me 10, and then I do 10 plus 16. Because like addition and subtraction, the order doesn't matter. So I do it the same as you, just different numbers. That answer is really good, but it's not good enough. Why wouldn't it be good enough? It's not lowest terms. It's not simplest form. It's not reduced, right? The reason it's not is because I can divide the top and the bottom number both by 2. If I do that, that gives me 13 out of 3. That would be my answer, 13 thirds. Beautiful. I want you to try H. Um, we'll start with the step first step. The first step to every problem has been the same. It's convert those into improper fractions. So I want you to try to convert all three of those things into improper fractions. Okay, so on those questions, I've converted them all. It became 7 over 3 minus 2 over 3 plus 9 over 5. To be able to add and subtract, you now need a common denominator for all of those. So I want you to try to convert them all to have a common denominator. What number is that common denominator? 15. Convert all of them to have a denominator of 15. So I'll give you a minute to try that. I'll do it on the board as well so you can check your answer, see if you're right. Okay, so if you look up on the board, I've multiplied the first one by 5, the middle one by 5, the third one by 3. That gave me common denominators of 15 all the way across. I can then add and subtract the top. You can do it in any order you want. Um, I did 35 minus 10 is 25. 25 plus 27 is 52. That gave me 52 out of 15. That is a proper answer uh, because I cannot divide the top and the bottom by anything that's the same. I can divide each number by things, but not something that's the same. So I leave it like that. Yes, sir. 59? Uh, try. Oh, try it again. You calculate just on the tops. You're up by a factor of 7. You probably added 20, 37? No, I got 42. 42? Do you have 35 over 15? Oh, that's why. That makes sense. You did seven times six. One button over. Okay. The second part of this is multiplication and division. 52 over 10. Yeah. Or 15. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do some multiplying and dividing of fractions. And remember... Adding and subtracting is actually harder than multiplying and dividing. So if you can do the adding and subtracting, the multiplying and dividing should be cakewalk for you. Which sounds weird, right? Because multiplying and dividing is harder in math but if you're just doing numbers. But when it comes to fractions, multiplying and dividing fractions isn't that hard. Your first step is still going to be the same. So we're back in our notebook right now. The first step is you have to turn mixed fractions back into improper fractions. To do that, which we've done lots, we take the first number, we multiply by the bottom number, gives us 18. We take that and we add it to the top. That gives me 20 out of 9. Multiplied by, if you do the middle one, 1 times 6 is 6. Add 6 to the top number to become 11 out of 6. The third one, 1 times 11 is 11. Add that to 4. And you get 15 out of 11. Awesome. First step, turn all of your mixed fractions into improper fractions. 
the reason why multiplying and dividing is easier is you get to skip the step of getting a common denominator, which is the hardest step most likely for people. Um, instead, all you need to do is multiply numerators with numerators and denominators with denominators. So you get to multiply across the top, across the bottom. If you do that, which I suggest you use a calculator for, you get 20 times 11 times 15 equals 3,300. Divided by, if you go across the bottom, 9 times 6 times 11 is 594. Multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. Now, the only problem with multiplying and dividing is it's probably more likely that you're going to have to reduce. Just because multiplying is going to create really big numbers. right? So looking at that, that answer is good, but it's not good enough because it's not simplest form. It's not reduced. Both of those numbers can divide. Um, the obvious one right now is they can both divide by 2. So I'm going to divide both of them by 2 and see what I get. Um, I should get 1650. Yep. Divide by 594 divided by 2 is 282. And that can divide again by 2. So if you divide that by 2... It could divide by 66. Yeah. Both cool. Thanks for saving me some time. So if I divided that over and over and over by 2, I'd get, eventually get it down to reduced form. So both these should divide by 33 is what you're telling me? 66. 66 right now? Oh, no, I went to the top of it. Yeah, that was Wait. 594 divided by 66 and 3300 0, 0 divided by 66. It does work. Um, that means they should both divide right now by... By 33, but it doesn't work. So, um, Brandon's saving us some work here. Um, he said the first questions were both divisible by 66. That's the biggest number they both can divide by. The stage I'm at right now, the biggest number they can both divide by is 33. So, that'll save me some work. Um, I had written down the wrong number at the start, which is why it didn't work for me. So if I divide both those by 33, I get 50 over 9. Remember to reduce fractions, right? Keep figuring out what they can divide by until you can't divide any further. And that's multiplying fractions together. We'll do another one. So if we look at this guy right here. First step, turn them into improper fractions. Mixed fractions are no good for us. So to convert them into improper fractions, we would end up getting 4 times 4 is 16. 16 plus 3 is 19 on the top. In the middle, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus, 12, or 10 plus 2 is 12, so 12 over 5. And the third one... 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5. So we have 5 over 3. After you've converted them into improper fractions, you then can just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, which is wonderful. If you do that, you should end up with, and I can't do 19 times 12 times 5 in my head, 1,140 divided by 60, I think. Yeah. Again, that's a number that can be reduced. You could start dividing by 2, and that would work, and just keep going until it doesn't work anymore. Or you could try to find the biggest one they both divide by. So, for instance, I know that 60 is divided by 30. So maybe I try 1,140 divided by 30, and it doesn't work. Oh, it did work. Ha, huh, that's cool. Do they actually divide perfectly? Oh, look at that. If you divide those together, it's 19 over 1, which is just 19. I would have only divided by 30. <laughs> Again, getting to that number isn't always easy. It might take some work. 
right? Like realistically, you could have divided both those by five. Then you could have divided them again by three. And then you could have divided them again by four. And it would have taken some time, but you would have got there. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And then next year when you're allowed to use the big calculators, we'll show you a trick that makes it really easy. Awesome. Dividing fractions. A little bit different. There's an extra step. Um, but the first step is still creating improper fraction. So if we look at these, we would have to convert all of them. I'm just going to do it quick for you. So the first one becomes 11 over 3. The second one becomes 21 over 4. And the third one becomes 11 over 10. I know you could do that. We're just not going to spend the time talking about it again because we've done it so many times today. So you can just write those numbers down. First step, convert to an improper fraction. If it was just multiplying, we'd multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. But it's not just multiplying. This question has division in it. And when we have a division of a fraction, we kiss and flip. What that means is you turn the division into a multiplication and you flip the fraction upside down. Everything else stays the same. So I now have 11 over 3 times 21 over 4 times 10 over 11. And now that it's multiplication, we just go across the top, across the bottom, and it keeps life simple. So if you go across the top, 11 times 21 times 10 would be 2,310. Across the bottom, you get 132. You can reduce that. Uh, that thing is going to divide by 33. 132 divided by 33. And 2,310 divided by 33. Yep. Oh, they can divide by 66 again. They can divide by 66 again. So if you divide both of them by 66, you get 35 divided by 2. All right. We're going to take like a, a second to talk about how you can find big numbers that reduce into numbers. So if you're like already kind of struggling and you're like, Ooh, this is hard, then feel free to just like ignore what I'm saying because it might get a little bit confusing. If you are crushing this math and you're like, how did he reduce that faster? There is a trick. Okay, so the better you get at it, the better you'll recognize numbers. But when you have something like this, I'm just going to zoom in on this. The way I figured out what I could reduce by a little bit easier is by looking at what the numbers I multiplied by. So by looking at this, I realized this 11 and this 11 would simplify after I divided them together. So that gives me the first number I wanted to be able to divide by. Then I realized this 21 and this 3 would be able to divide by each other. And then I realized that this 10 and this 4 could both divide by 2. And that gives me 66 as the number that I could divide into all the numbers. So if you look at the parts that become the whole, and you realize what I could divide from the top and the bottom, it gives you the bigger number that you could divide by. That's extra. You don't need to be able to do that trick. But if you're someone who's like, hey, I'm good at these numbers, I get it, but how could I find that number faster? Look at the parts and see the tops and the bottoms, what could divide. I could divide 11, 3, and 2 in different spots, which means that in total I could divide by 66. It's kind of a cool trick. All right, division. Um, to do D, we're going to talk about bed mass. Bed mass means you should do what's in the brackets first and then go outside of them. Okay, so for this question, we have to respect this and calculate what that equals first. 
Before we even get to that, I'm going to convert all of them to improper fractions anyway, because we know that's what we have to do. So I'm going to write this question again, but with improper fractions. Uh, the first one would become 8 over 5 divided by 7 over 4 divided by 5 over 4. So that's the same question converted for you. Brackets must happen first. We need to figure out what that equals. It's a division of fractions. So what do we want to do? We want to kiss it and flip it, right? Turn that middle number into a multiplication. Leave the first number alone. So kiss and flip. Then multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, but only in the brackets, right? We're solving in the brackets first. We have eight divided by five out front still. If you put that into your calculator, seven times four is 28. Four times five is 20. And it might be a good idea to reduce that fraction right now because it's probably easier to reduce it now than later. Using my trick, notice there's a four on the top and a four on the bottom. So four will be the number I can reduce it by. You might be able to just see that one on its own if you divide both those by four. That gives you eight over five divided by uh, seven over five. And it gets flip again. So looking at that, I now have a division of fractions because I've solved the brackets and it gave me a fraction. So I'm just going to kiss and flip one more time. I have 8 over 5 times 5 over 7. What do you think, before I even calculate my answer, what number am I going to be able to reduce it by? Yeah, because there's one on the top and one on the bottom, right? So uh, once I calculate my answer, 8 times 5 is 40. 7 times 5 is 35. Both those numbers divide by 5. To give you an answer of 8 over 7. It's a handy trick, uh, especially if you go with the dash 1 stream and you start getting into um, units where we do this but with letters. And we do it with like big linear equations and quadratic equations and it gets kind of crazy. But if you can recognize those little tricks, it pays off huge in the future. Yeah. Um, what I noticed is in this question is with both of the things that we multiplied was the next fraction. Yeah. So like, like what you, okay. Like, do you mean like if I look at this right here, like, like this, seven. this three step? The four and the five, the, sorry, the four and the four right here. Because I divided by four, they canceled, and I was left with seven and five, which ends up being the answer, seven over five. Yeah. And, like, that's not a coincidence, right? So you'll start to notice, like, as you get good at these things, there's patterns like that where it's like, oh, I can divide these by each other, and it just leaves me with the parts on the outside. And that is a trick, right? Like, these things cancel. You don't need to know that, but it's stuff that can kind of advance your math mind. <laughs> That's what we're going to call it. Yeah. Cool. We got one uh, mega question over here. <coughs> so if we had that, we're going to do bed mass, right? Bed mass says that you do in the brackets first. Inside the brackets, we have subtraction. So I'm just going to focus on this. And I'm going to do this full question. So I'm going to do it every single step. The first step is to convert these into improper fractions. I'm going to do it for everything because while I'm doing it, I might as well just go ahead. So if I want to convert these into improper fractions, I'm going to take the front, the big number, and multiply it by the denominator. So 5 times 5 is 25. And that will add to the number 2 to become 27 over 5.
the next one. I have three and two thirds. If I want to convert that, I go three times three is six. Oh, it's nine. Nine plus two is 11 over three. The last one, we have three times four is 12. Right? Big number times the denominator. Take that, add it to give me 15 over four. First step, convert them all. You can't do this without converting them all. It's just the easiest way to tackle it. Then we're going to focus our energy into the brackets because that's the first step. So if I'm looking at this, I want to focus on that subtraction that I've underlined in purple. To subtract, what do we have to have? Common denominator, preferably the lowest common denominator. Um, to do that, we're going to have to multiply this one by 3 and this one by 5 so that they both become 15. The blue fraction, 27 times 3, 71, 81. We have 81 divided by 15 minus 55 out of 15. And the number outside the brackets, we don't care about because we're only focusing on subtracting these two things. Oh, did I make a mistake? I saw a lot of looks of like, oh, no, it's. I'm, what am I times in the by? Um, I times the blue one by three and the red one by five. My fives are always messy. I apologize. Because you have a common denominator, you can now subtract the tops. So 81 minus 55, if you were to put that into your calculator, is 26 over 15. And that is now solved inside the brackets. The times 15 over 4 on the outside hasn't done anything yet. It's just sitting there waiting as we solve inside the brackets. Okay, those of us who are using my trick to try to solve this question, you could multiply these things in your head by figuring out what cancels. No, it's not. It's Miss Nice. So if you were to look at this, you should hopefully notice the top and bottom can both divide by 15, and they can both divide by 2, which means my answer is going to be 13 over 2. If you're not good at that, do 26 times 15 on the top to get 390. 15 times 4 on the bottom to get 60. And realize both numbers divide by 30 to give you 13 over 2. 